And we're rolling. First day of second semester of stats for 2023. Whoa, 2023. I remember thinking back like when I was like when I was young, I distinctly remember like the year 2000 happening and being like, whoa. Like it's the future. Now we're in 2023. Crazy. Yeah. Thought there'd be flying cars by now. No, sir. Um all right, so section one one, and uh, I wonder what it's gonna be like when I'm done teaching. Like in the year, well, what would that be? Probably Starting in 2009, 10. So 30, 2045? 2045. I could potentially have your children as students yep. in school. Like they could have Mr. Labrador. 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 Um, today, what we're going to be looking at is just basic definitions, uh, and that's really uh, like a lot of chapter one. It's like kind of like a, um, like a kind of setting the stage for it, um, and and you'll see that within a lot of the, the sections, there's some definitions that we apply, there's some definitions that we apply, some formulas that we apply. So taking a look today, you know, what is statistics? You know, what is statistics? Well, statistics is just basically. Um, the, the science of collecting, organizing, analyzing, interpreting data, right? It's all about data, data analysis, basically. Statistics is the study of, of data. How do you collect it? We're going to spend a long time talking about, um, okay, how do you create a sample? What is a representative sample? How do you make sure that that sample is random? Um, how do you make sure, how, how do you decide who gets sampled? The science of collecting, organizing, okay? How do we represent that data? Is it a pie chart? Is it, is it a um, uh, is it just a table? Is it just is it a is it a histogram? Whatever it may be, science of collecting, organizing, analyzing. We're going to make decisions upon that data. Basically, by the end of the semester, the last couple chapters are um, making decisions based on data and making decisions based on okay, how confident in it are we in making that decision and interpreting off of that? Okay. okay. Okay, after we make our decisions, what can we tell? What can we tell from making those decisions? What, can, what decision can we make beyond that? How, what, what do we infer based on that? Okay. So it's the science of collecting, organizing, analyzing, interpreting data in order to make decisions. So what is data anyway? Well, data is just, it, uh, data consists of information coming from observation, counts, measurements, and responses. Um, fun fact, data is a plural word. It is both a singular and a plural. Um, so that's why that is correct. Data consists, not data consists, but data consists of information coming from observations, counts, measurements, or responses. Uh, so basically, anything can be data. Whatever you collect, right? Could be quantitative, could be qualitative. We'll talk about what that means here in a minute. Could be qualitative, could be qualitative, could be like just um, just numbers, stri strictly numer numerical data. Um, it could be um, just like okay, tell me your favorite movies. That could be data. Um, tell me your favorite colors. Tell me how many times you do something. Tell me your opinion on something. Right? That is all data. Okay? And coming from observations, counts, measurements, responses. Um, we can measure the, the temperature each day. That's measurements, right? So that's data. Um, we could measure responses or um, collect responses to a survey. Um, we could just straight up observe things, right? Take a hive of a plant over a certain amount of time. Um, that's all of that is data and the statistics is okay how do we formulate that data okay um, we have a population and we have a sample okay we have a population and we have a sample uh, and that's going to be a key difference to understand and, and tell the difference of the population is the collection of all outcomes and I make sure you make, make note of the word all so it's great teaching a uh, class during mentoring Mentoring period over there, mentoring period over there. Gets loud sometimes. There's one day in here where we will um one of the one of the projects is I give you guys all a bag of MMs and you run probability on those MMs and you have to like you have a little cup and you have to shake that cup and pull out two MMs and see the colors. 
and you do some observations while well, shaking the cup gets really loud. <laughs> and one day, this is an apple, they were like, it was third period last semester, so it was during an honors hour two class, and they were taking a test. It was not, she was not too happy with me that day. Um, okay, population. Population is the collection of all outcomes, and that's a very key distinction all outcomes. Population means everything, no exceptions. Population means all the possibilities, all outcomes, all responses, all measurements, all counts that are of interest. Okay. Population is the total. Sample is the subset. Okay. A sample is the subset. Sample is a subset of a population. Okay. And the sample that you take out of that population must be random in, in a lot of cases, but in, in all, all cases, in best cases, best practices should be random. So a population is the overarching group. The sample is the subset. You take, you know, maybe if it was, you know, the population of students in Mr. Laverick's fourth period statistics class. Okay, that population only consists of nine students. So the population isn't too large, but it is all of them, right? Okay, if I say only um, students sitting at a high top table, Right? A subset of that. That would be one out of those nine. Yeah. Um, so it is a subset of that population. Right? Subset of that population. Okay. <laughs> so let's identify population and samples. 200 registered voters were polled and 56% of them expected to vote in the upcoming election. Identify the population, identify the sample, and describe, a, describe the sample data. Okay, so what is the population here? Let's read that one more time. 200 registered voters were polled, and 56% of them expected to vote in the upcoming election. What is the population? 200 is the sample. I sampled 200 voters. Right? I sampled 200 voters. What is the population that that, that 200 is representing? All registered, voters. all registered voters and that's why I make it looks like zoo voters um, that's why I make a special point to say all registered voters it's an e. okay all registered voters not just not just the 200 that I sampled yes I did I did sample 200 of them right I sampled 200 voters and they are representing the entire population of all registered voters and I can say, well, if I if that 200 has been random, and if that number is big enough, I can say that those those statistics represent the entire population. Right? I lower the sample; eh, they might not be as representative. I don't make that sample random; they might not that that data might not be as representative. So it's all depending upon how you make your sample, how you construct your your survey. Um, so population here is all registered voters. The sample is the 200 that I take. 200 registered voters were polled at 56% of them expected to vote in the upcoming election. So describing the sample data, 56% um, um, said they would vote. Is that what I'm saying? Um, expected to vote. Expected to vote. And we can go even further and say, well, if 56% of them expected to vote, well, then I know that um, 112 out of the um, 112 voters, 112 expected to vote. Ah, whatever. That's good enough. Okay. So when I'm asking you to describe the sample data, I'm asking you to just say, okay, what 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 did this tell me about the sample? Right. Well, it said that 56% of those 112 voters or sorry, 56% of those 200 voters said they were going to vote. And now, if we say that, if our, rep, if our sample is truly representative of the entire population, I can then say, well, if there's 3 million people that are expected to vote, okay, then we can kind of gauge how many, or sorry, 3 million people, 3 million registered voters, like the population, then we can say, well, 56% of those are expected to vote. We can kind of gauge how many people are expected to vote on that, on that election there. All right, so a couple more definitions here. A parameter. A parameter. A parameter is a numerical description of a population characteristic. And I'm a special note of it's a description of a population characteristic. 
And I can contrast that with the term statistic. A statistic is a numerical description of a sample characteristic. Okay. Like for example, if I say I take the entire freshman class, oh no, I don't, I think that's my line. Hold on a second. I don't want to steal my example from the next slide. I almost did this my example. Um, if I say I find the average temperature for um, I have to wait this here. If I if I'm just looking at average temperature in the year 2022, and I take the months and I, I find it, I find every high and every low. Uh, or average high temperature, we'll just say. I would take every high temperature and I average them all together out of the whole year. And I'm only looking at that year 2022. That would be a parameter. The average that the average high temperature for the year, I'm only looking at that year, that would be the parameter. Okay? Because I'm taking the pipe the entire population picking all 365 days and I'm using them. Now, if I say, if I say, okay, well, I'm gonna take a random sample out of that year every fifth day. Right, because that's probably representative, you know, getting all the way through the year. And I say, okay, every fifth day, and I'm going to take those temperatures, and I'm going to find the average out of every fifth day that I choose. That would be a statistic, because I'm taking a subset of that population, I'm finding the averages of those temperatures, and then that case that would be a statistic. If you're using the entire population, which is it's really hard to have a parameter. Right? If you think about the registered voters, are you really going to get every registered voter? Probably not. Right? That's really hard to get a parameter in certain instances. In certain instances, it's relatively easy. Like if I asked you all, like if I said, okay, I'm going to take Mr. Labrick's fourth period statistics class, and I said, how many hours do you sleep at night? That's a parameter of my class, right? Because I'm taking every student within my class. That's a parameter. But if I only went to this table and I said, okay, how long do you guys sleep at night? Just you three. And then I said, well, a sample out of that, well, then that, that would be a statistic because I'm taking a subset of that population and I'm finding the value off of that. That's a statistic. So let's kind of decide. Uh, a survey of several hundred collegiate student athletes in the United States found that during the season of their sport, the average time spent on athletics by student athletes is 50 hours per week. Let's read that one more time. A survey of several hundred collegiate student athletes in the United States found that during the season of their sport, the average time spent on athletics by the student athletes is 50 hours per week, more than a full-time job. So, and that's, that's, that's actually true. My, I had friends, I had this one girl, she was uh, on, the, on the softball team at OU, and like, they were like, they never had time to do anything. And they, that's like a, it was, never saw her other than class. And their coaches, they had like strict crazy rules like, if you, uh, their coaches would make them sit in the first two rows of every single class, if they could pick their class. And the coaches would, I, I saw her softball coach one time, and like peek in the window to make sure she was sitting in the front row. Jeez, stay my business. But I guess they're not paying for college, so. Um, now, is this a sample, or is this, I'm sorry, excuse me, is this a statistic, or is that a parameter? That 50 hours per week, is that a statistic, or is that a parameter? Statistic, right? And the key word here is a survey of several hundred collegiate students, at, collegiate student athletes, right? A survey of them. I don't know how many my survey was. It doesn't really matter, right? That is the, the sample. And it was a survey of several hundred collegiate student athletes. That's my sample. And within that, I said that those the, the, of whom I surveyed spend 50 hours per week. Okay, so um, we would say that this is a statistic. Okay, let's identify the population then. If that's truly a sample of my population, what is the population? What is the population then? Just all student college athletes? Yeah, all student athletes in the US. All collegiate student athletes in the US. That's the sample. I take the sample out of that entire population. The population is all of them, 
and then I'm only going to survey a certain amount of them. That's the sample. Okay. Take a look here. The freshman class at a university has an average SAT score of 548. Statistic or parameter? That's a parameter. That's a parameter. Now, I could argue and say, well, what if your study was about all students at that university? Okay, I get it. Yeah. Then, then I guess that would be a statistic. But the way it's worded here, I would say that's more of a parameter because it's studying the entire freshman class at the university. Their population seems to be the entire freshman class at the university. That's like saying here, I, I was going to use the example of what if I took the entire freshman class, or uh, not that, what if I took the entire, all of the Algebra 1 students and I found their average score for a certain test, right? That's a parameter. Well, then what if I had said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sample um, 10 students out of my class, 10 students out of this example, Matt Bolt's class, 10 students, and I took 10 students from each teacher, and then I found that average. Okay, that's a statistic because I'm taking a subset of that entire population. Okay, chapter two is all about descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics is the branch of statistics that involves the organization, summarization, and display of data. I think this is like robot statistics. Like, there are no feelings here. There are no, uh, no angles to it. There are no, there's no spin to this. It's just describing. It's just describing. It's the branch of statistics that involves the organization, summarization, and display. This is my kind of statistics. <laughs> I don't like to make decisions. I don't like to, you know, I don't like to have opinions. I just like to present data. You deal with it the way you want to deal with it. I feel like if I was not a math teacher, like if I did not choose education, if I was not a teacher, I would probably be doing something with statistics because I think it's really, I think it's really interesting to display data in certain ways. Because honestly, you could, you could give data any kind of spin you want to it, and, and that's that's why people like get so, that's why people argue so much because you can. Man, you could get any type of data to back up your situation, you back up your opinion. Um, now, we're often not told where that data comes from. <laughs> you know, we're often not told where that data, if that data was truly representative. You know, people always make up numbers and say like, oh, well, 30% of people think this. Well, okay, where'd you get that information? Where'd, you, where'd that come from? And then people say, well, I heard it somewhere. I found it on the internet. Facebook told me. <laughs> Uh, descriptive statistics is the branch where I'm just saying, okay, here's the data. You do it with, you do it with it what you want. It involves the organization, summarization, and display. No feelings, no slants, no spins, just strictly numbers. My kind of data. Find which parts are the descriptive statistics in the following statement. A large sample of men aged 48 was studied for 18 years. A longitudinal study. Uh, a large sample of men was a, uh, age 48 was studied for 18 years. For unmarried men, approximately 70% were alive at the age of 65. For married men, 90% were alive at the age of 65. Okay, the descriptive pieces, the descriptive statistics. Here, 78% or sorry, 70% 70, 70 were alive at the age of 65. 90% were alive at the age of 65, right? Those are the descriptive pieces, right? That's it. Right? There's no feeling, I, I, I'm not making any decisions based on that. The descriptive pieces are 70% were alive at the age of 65. For unmarried men, 70% were alive at the age of 65. I'm not making any decisions on that. I'm just saying that's, a, that's the truth. Right? Numbers don't lie. Out of these men, 70% unmarried men were, were alive, or 70% of them were alive at 65. For married men, 90% were alive at the age of 65. Okay. Now, could you make assumptions? Could you make an assumption based on this? Yeah, but is that, that takes it away from descriptive statistics. That is no longer descriptive. Once you start making opinions, once you start making decisions, once, once you start making inferences, then it's no longer descriptive statistics, it's something else. It's inferential statistics. 
Inferential statistics is the branch of statistics that involves using a sample to draw conclusions about a population. Again, I'm more of a descriptive type guy. I like the, okay, cut and dry. Here's a, here are the numbers. You decide with it what you want. You do whatever the, with, you want with those numbers. Inferential statistics, okay, then it turns into, well, if that's true, then I know this, right? Well, if in that last example, we could say, well, if you're married, you're going to live longer then, right? That, that, that's what that statistics is telling me. Well, there may be all sorts of other factors to that. You don't know. That's like for a while, there was, it was coming out like, you know, all sorts of things cause cancer. Eating tomatoes, uh, for a while, it was eating tomatoes. Eating too, eating too much tomatoes cause cancer. Really? How do you get that down? Where, where's that coming from? Living cause cancer. What? You don't know, you don't, how do you, how can you truly make those decisions based on that? Like, how can you truly make those inferences based on that? I get, I get a little fed up with people that, that make all sorts of jumps and conclusions like that. How do we know? How do we truly know? There's too, too many outside factors going on. And so what our job in these inferential statistics is just to say what, <clears throat> it's, it's not only to say what we are inferring, and it's not only to say that we are drawing conclusions, because we will do this. We will draw conclusions based on that. But we, we, we have to draw conclusions, and based on those conclusions, we have to, along with it, say, we are 90% confident in saying this. Right? And that's what goes into, um, we were talking about confidence intervals and stuff yesterday. We were talking about, but, uh, I was showing you within chapters, we talked about confidence intervals. And that's kind of where it gets into, where we can say, okay, I am 70% confident in making this decision. I am 95% confident in making this decision. I'm 95, 99% confident in making this decision. Okay? And that's what we can say beyond that. So inferential statistics is the branch of statistics that involves using a sample to draw conclusions about a population. The basic tool in the study of inferential statistics is probability, right? You think about this, I, I you know, I, I can say there's a one out of six chance that I'm going to roll a one, right? So I can then say, well, if I roll this six times, I bet I'm going to get one, one, right? I'm making a decision based on that. I'm, I'm inferring, I'm going to say, okay, my total population of six rolls is probably going to be one. How confident am I? Eh, I mean, I'm relatively confident. Could there be more than one one? Sure. Could there be six ones? I guess that's probably not likely, but I could. Right? So it's all depending upon how confident you are in those things that are going to happen. Okay. And then and now we'll talk about a lot about probability. A survey conducted among 105 boys and girls at Lake High School showed that 76% of the boys like math class, while 48% of the girls like math class. Identif identify the descriptive, and, I, and then let's talk about what inferences we can describe based on that. And again, we're going to talk in generalities here. I know we're going to take, we're going to jump to conclusions here. Identify the descriptive piece. What is the descriptive piece of this? <clears throat> yeah, seventy-six percent of boys like math class. Seventy-six percent of boys liked math. 48% of the girls liked math. Just numbers, right? I'm not making inferences based on that. The descriptive piece of this, the descriptive aspect is just that 70, based on my survey, based on my 105, 76% of the boys said they liked math class. 48% of the girls said they liked math class. That's it. I'm not making any inferences about that. That's descriptive statistics. So what inferences could we draw from that? More, more boys like math than girls? I mean, and, and that's why, you know, we, it's like we cringe a little bit when we say that. It's like, really, like jumping to conclusions like that can get, you, can get you into trouble a little bit. More boys like math than girls? You know, and that again can get you into trouble. Well, what outside factors are, are happening here, right? What's going on here? 
why are we getting this data? And that kind of loops it back around to the beginning. Like once you draw your conclusions, you can kind of critique your conclusions and say, is that really true? And if that's really true, or if that, or if we don't believe ourselves, if we don't say like, okay, do more boys like Matt and girls here? How did we create our survey? Then we can loop it back in and say like, okay, well, maybe we took only certain classes or maybe we only took certain teachers' kids or maybe, because if you were asking all of my students, all of my, 100% of my students like that, right? You know, so maybe, maybe they took more boys out of Mr. Labbert's class than they did out of other classes. Or maybe they took, they didn't take as many girls that had Mr. Labbert because I have all of my students like that, right? So then we can go back and say like, critique our, critique our study, critique our survey and say like, Okay, did we truly do a representative sample? Is our sample truly representative? Is our, um, it, how did we sample those students? And then we can go from there and make, make decisions based on, okay, do we run around that survey over again? Or how confident are we, are we based on those results? How, how confident are we in saying this statement? Okay. All right. Uh, that's all I've got for today. So the homework is here. Again, what is in parentheses is the only required piece. Okay? If you need more problems, go with the rest of them. You can do the rest of them. If, you, if you're good, then all I need to see are those four. Remember, please submit them on Canvas. Um, that's where I'll be just inputting your grades within Canvas. So make sure you submit it on Canvas. You snap a picture, put it in there. Make sense? Yep. There we go. Let's shut the video off.